started with the talk. Uh, thanks, Gene, for letting me talk, and thank you all of you for. A lot of people really good job on the rotation. Uh, doing rotation. These great pots. The talk is called What I Wished I Knew About Back Residents. Uh, I get a lot of these questions on service. It's mostly uh, for a case. Um, there's a sort of come up all the time. People aren't sure how to approach um, these types of questions and these types of patients, although they know more about it than they think they do. So I'm going to give you just a very basic framework for solving that. Um, a question you'll probably have them you just leave it in the comments and kind of you know, put the main one. And address them at the end. Like, so hopefully two parts. I'll I'll let on some basic topics in vasculitis that you guys can ask. Me. So the vasculitides are heterogeneous, uh, but they're all linked by the finding of inflammation in the walls of blood vessels. There's 30 primary forms, but then there's lots of other types that you know specifically my patients can get lupus patients. Patients and always look out. They're always on the lookout for infection, malignancy, things like that that causes secondary vascular. Important to keep in mind. We've had many patients, older ones, that just ended up having it. Sometimes before because you always want to make sure you have sleep. This is actually um, it was in the 1860s by Kuzma and Ma uh, Ma It was a sailor. Uh, who had mononeuritis multiplex, which if you're not familiar with the term, means sort of like these scattered numbness down a leg or something. It don't really make much sense distribution, but there's multiple of them. Uh, weakness, abdominal pain. Nodules were in the medium-sized arteries, and they wanted to call it initially periarteritis nodosa. Um, because it looked like there is localized inflammation to the perivascular sheets, and then it led to an thickening of the vessels. So when you see um, a classic vasculitis and you know medium vessel vasculitis um, uh, angiography, you should see lots of vessels. Uh, so. You can use a lot of the characteristics of pan patients to sort of um, compare the other them. One other, uh, that, that we come up with, Ellie's rheumatology. Um, just, anything more of medium to large vessels and its major branches, which is your large Of arteries by pain, which others are different. One of our um, uh, major studies that we see, especially pulmonary lung involvement, as opposed to obviously inflammation. You would think about Wagner's, or at least I would also now know as GP. And, um, This is you should know. Uh, so, uh, I think this is important when you're classifying this. Yes, we'll get into it. Um, it, it, it. We'll look at age, patient. Sex is pregnant. This Dakiyasu is born female, so think about who your patient is. And ethnic background can be very important. Uh, Silk Road for Bouchette. An Asian situation is all notes, and that's what's important. Uh, pattern of organ volume. 
extremely important. I would argue probably uh, the most. You know, we always want to look for a biopsy, and, and you can tell. So that, that usually comes later um, after you're able to get the biopsy, if you are at all. Um, and then and Um, but one of the are three and MPO Frank and those actually are very helpful. It's tighter, obviously, with pulmonary syndrome. Think about um, good passages. That's what that's describing there, um, et cetera. Also, helpful to think about what other disease processes the patient has. Think about like hypoglycemia, um, they have hepatitis B, think about pan, et cetera. Uh, don't turn those on. Others, but it's not well think about what other things the patient has going on. So as I've said, there's two things to me that are the most important. Think about uh, what type of is probably So you can't just say that, you know, for example, an ankyovasculitis is a small vessel vasculitis because it can overlap. And then I think it's important that the vessel size is um, pattern. You know, if you're thinking about pulmonary renal syndrome, you should think first about this, for example. So vessel size, when we talk about that, we mean is the aorta and it's major medium power. To have those four elements that you can write. Um, and when we say medium vessel vasculitis, the radiology is these are the ones that you can actually uh, sort of be um, hands, et cetera. And then small are all vessels, capillaries, post capillary venules. And because glomeruli may be viewed as different forms of vasculitis and are considered to be small vessels. So here's a really nice picture. Uh, it's in Kelly's rheumatology book um, that sort of shows you. There's overlap, but then you can kind of repeat things. Um, ease, you know, range of vessel size. And you see also known as temporal um, stockies are you know medium large, and then um, you know any GPA all this stuff. Typical, you know, obviously we have imaging, but what the patient actually presented with, and this can be a very helpful guide. So if you're talking, doing very good pulses, um, you're, you've already done most of the work there, you're already on to this is most likely an old person is probably going to be temporary. Um, and a young person, especially a young Asian female. Um, I've had African American female who has tachyos as well. Um, but obviously, the whole fat that you're about everything else is going on. I know there's, there's uh, you're thinking about uh, ulcers and nodules. So, you know, with these small uh, vessel vasculitis in the skin, you're talking about leukocytoclastic vasculitis, or you'll hear us say LC, um, different than a patient that has like a medium. Vasculitis that oftentimes will have that, but then also have a little, a little bit of um, manifestations like ulcers that don't heal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then uh, your small nephritis. That's uh, I think nice guide there as well. Starting point. Um, you know a lot of these already. Uh, you've done some studying. A lot of like like I was when I was a resident. Don't think you know that much about vasculitis, but you actually probably do. Um, you just have to refresh, keep refreshing, keep learning. Um, and you know, if, if you see someone for airways, lungs, and skin, think ankyovascular symptoms, pulses, air tachycardia. GCA specifically, you should learn all the findings. They can have jaw claudication, um, feet. All this stuff you can see with old person that has a new, to say they're good. Um, if you see nerve and skin, 
little hand, skin, kidneys, joints, and nerves. You've heard of cryoglobulinemic vasculitis. We've talked about that. GI joints, kidney, P. You initially, because that's usually a kid's disease, although we had a patient recently at UC that had this. Um, but so you keep it on your differential. Um, and then asthma, uh, for a long time, usually. Things are, those are just examples. So, uh, I did work with them as a consultant, and then also when I came in rheumatology. Uh, they'll often ask me, when, when should they consult room for suspected vasculitis? And I say, as soon as you suspect it, uh, we're happy to help rule it out. Uh, we're happy to help sure that you send appropriate antibodies um, and that uh, we're usually going to for a biopsy accessible. Uh, is, that's really uh, the proof is in the pudding. And if you're going to use cytotic or rituxin, or something, you want to have to, because these are strong medications, we want to make sure that we're treating the right thing. Biopsies are super helpful for sometimes giving you the diagnosis, oftentimes, but also you're not directly, you don't want an infection, a cancer that you would see with biopsy sometimes, very important. Um, so the areas that you can biopsy, typically if the kidneys involved, probably the place you go, it's, it's pretty accessible. Um, it highest yield biopsy. Uh, we're always going to, this goes back and forth, but both callers are going to, and that's the, um, the diagnosis in people. And then, you know, you're dedicated to steroids for a long, long time, or you can catch something else with it. And, um, and then, you know, that's not the case. If it's a high treating anyway, but it's the biopsy important. I know they can do really, really good uh, targeted ultra in the system. And they're saying, Um, and really, uh, MRA is not as good either. So biopsy is the answer there. Uh, you do a biopsy. A lot of those patients are going to be unstable, and you're going to have to, uh, but you can um, you do a thorough nerve biopsy, specifically if they're having uh, symptoms, um, you know, a, a nerve-related a vascular speeding, it's monitoring, especially if you're in the leg, and you do a thorough nerve biopsy. Nerve can be helpful if you're good Good, but you can. If that's your only choice. Um, skin biopsies, especially what I'm talking about here, is more like small vessel vasculitis of so the LCV of the skin. Um, a skin biopsy is typically not indicated, but in certain circumstances, so you all look it up. Ask your dermatologist. Do some vasculitis we can use as well because you see IgA deposition. Easier. Um, but he's probably the best. Um, what should you think about if you see leukocytoclastic? I've seen it before. It's, uh, it's very obvious, perhaps. Uh, but think about uh, it. can be uh, so you don't miss. I guess that's when you call me, is the first thing I'm going to tell you is have you done all the lab work? Have you looked at the kidneys? Have you looked at the, you know, check six? Et cetera. Uh, and then keep the differential for uh, what kind of actually if you work for me on rheumatology rotation. Did you ask all my review systems? And if you don't, we will. No problem. That's what we're here for. Uh, but we're gonna ask them lots of questions and make sure we don't uncover something else that could explain why they have skin vasculitis. We're always looking for systemic vasculitis. Um, that's the most important thing to do when you see that. It usually it's removed the affinity. You can't look for the infection. Um, if you haven't rotated, you do it. Um, if you're a classic LC rash. The questions I get most of GCA, temporal arthritis. Uh, what should I do? Diagnose in the hospital. Um, I'll often get a call uh, with a frantic uh, resident. Uh, what they should do because they're uh, old. I do think uh, they might be. And you, uh, 
uh, treat it and ask questions later. Always take the clinical context into consideration. These are so your patients are brittle have issues. You know, potentially, hopefully, a short term thing um, where you start them on steroids and then get it. And then if you make a decision that you can stop steroids. Answer is that you yeah, proceeding um, with a, especially especially start to have vision changes. Uh, go ahead and start the steroids, and you can call us to follow along. But go ahead and just start planning on a raging because uh, you're going to need it. You're going to want to. People think it's a big deal. Sure, it's a biopsy, it's a surgery, but patients tolerate it actually very well. Um, so it's for our biopsy ENT surgery. Services. I've had the most success with getting to them quickly. Vascular might take a bigger chunk, which is what you know, certain people in a certain context. Both are um, less of ENT, sometimes we'll say hundreds about their etiologies. Most, most common. Neuropathy. There's also non arteritic which is less associated with, again, still just AA, you should think about that first. Think about that first. Um, so very important. Um, when we had one of those, you get a lot of things. And so uh, advice is if it's an old person and they have a new headache, especially if they start to have vision change, Absolutely be thinking about this, even if it's not the classic presentation. Um, what is the first thing that you should do if a patient has symptoms, which is as uh, the shoulder and hip girdles, as opposed to myositis, which is uh, classically more proximal weakness. Um, so if your old person has PMR symptoms, ask them about GCA symptoms, headache, jaw claudication, uh, vision changes, because that's very important. They're very, very, you don't want to be a person. They won't always tell you. Yeah, because the PMR is what really bothers them. They won't always tell you that they've also been having a headache. Um, is there something that can be off? This is more usually I get this from attendings and they say, is there something that can be offered to my GCA patients if they can't come off pregnant? So, you know, we, we treat the patient, they get the biopsy. Hopefully it comes back positive. We treat them with steroids and you have to wean these steroids over like a year or more. Um, and so you do it very slowly. Uh, oftentimes you get down to a certain point and you just find you can't get them off there. And you're like, well... This is, this is trouble. And so is there something else you can give them? The answer is yes. Um, and it's evidence-based. Actemra has been studied and it's been shown to at least help people uh, have a lower dose of steroid or to get off steroids eventually. Uh, methotrexate less proven. Uh, so Actemra is actually a pretty good. It's available for your patients. And, and who follows these patients? And we'll, it'll be us. I mean, all the other services want us to do it. Um, we're okay with that. We're, we're very, so we can take care of it for you. You should know about um, because a lot of residents and uh, physicians I work with, the attendings at Hawksworth, will, will give me updates and say, Hey, this patient's having issues, they ran out of stamina. And uh, if there's vision changes, opto should be involved. They, they'll come and do an eye exam, at least not an alternative diagnosis. Is there a patient that can have vision changes? Is there this is a shift of milligrams to a gram of steroid uh, solumedrol uh, every day for three days. You know, there's really not much evidence to suggest that we should be doing this, but we do. And the ophthalmologists do as well, the neuro-ophthalmologists, because um, you give them higher dose for three. We just go ahead and do it. Um, but the more typical dose for GC is actually a big um, We know we're long. But um, if the question is, should I pulse them, we're usually not opposed to it if they're losing vision. You want to try to protect anything that's left. Um, you know, within I think four hours or so, a lot of those changes are irreversible. That's why we say give them steroids immediately. Uh, does opto need to be involved? We talked about that. Is there a clinical sign or symptom that has a predictive value for GC so with a new headache? The answer is yes, and it's jaw claudication. Yes. Yeah, when I'm, the last couple of days I've been chewing steak and my jaw gets really tired and starts to hurt. You should be worried. Um, another it comes across our desk a lot. Uh, be concerned for primary CNS. Bad. 
all these diseases are very, very rare. Um, even for us, you know, I've, I've seen quite a few anchor vasculitis. Um, it's surprising actually that we see, uh, all these are very rare. Um, it's just good thing to differential diagnosis so that you're aware of um, how do you go about uh, tells you the radiologist tells you CNS fast the neurologist tells you that how do you go it's not uh, isn't it is it a meaningful for evidence of vasculitic changes because older people have these atherosclerotic changes um, be subtle differences which vessels and the distribution of the vessels that a neuroradiologist we have here uh, will be able to pick up on. However, these scans are not super good. They're notoriously called, under called. They're just good. And if it's clear, it looks like clear vasculitis, then you should be really aggressive. But oftentimes, you're not going to know for sure. Uh, uh, we do often. It might be a little more sensitive, a little more specific about the same standard CT MRA. Uh, but you can do it. It's a little bit riskier. It's like a 1% chance of death or something with it. So you have to think about whether you need to do it. Um, we have this conversation with neurologists a lot, whether the patient needs a brain biopsy if you strongly suspect CNS vasculitis. Um, there have been uh, several where it's suspected that it's a CNS vasculitis, but like that. So uh, always best to get the biopsy. And again, if, if you prove it, then you know what you're treating. And if the patient's not doing it, you should do cytoxin because that is the medication of choice for this. Steroids and cytoxin, also known as chlorophosphamide. A lot of infection malignancies with this medication. So it's, it's not, and that's fine. A big deal. Biopsy. This is I just threw this in there so that um, uh, you guys. Um, there is a China and Purpura, which I said we had one at UC recently, is who had interact uh, with sort of uh, classic small vessel uh, involvement, but then also some uh, looked to me more medium. Well, uh, nodules, I believe. She had some kidney involvement, a lot of spilling. She had a GI involvement, we're pretty sure. Um, she got treated with steroids, and then I left service. A renal involvement, they'll need some. Not sure how that finished out. Um, good case, though. EGPA, also known as Krauss. It's not in there. It's perfect for it as the other two, but it can still be helpful if you catch that. Um, rash, GI, neurologic issues. Uh, one of the important medication classes you can choose. Uh, the, but the allergist, I think, use something uh, like a, a brother to that. Um, so you can involve allergy if, if you diagnose EGPA and, and uh, rheumatology and allergy would be happy to take that patient. Um, urticarial vasculitis, like uh, rash, like more, uh, doesn't go away, you know, comes and goes. And then uh, low complements is sort of your buzzword for that uh, disease. You can also have systemic features. Very interesting. Just remedy pass out. Um, you sort of have an inflammatory constitutional phase with lots of inflammation. It's difficult to take that blood vessel. You can have serious issues involving the hepatitis C patients, Sjogren's patients. As well, so when you think about cry put this in there, but the most important thing to uh, cry type them and see whether you malignancy from our disease, et cetera. And so there's the type. Uh, so
with the rheumatologist and the human. Because Asian children less than five years old, uh, but I think you'll probably remember from your school. But swelling eyes not when they tend to get the check for a while. You don't deal with that very much. Any vasculitis? I'm going to talk about soon because a very important topic, and because it's such it's like a it's like a trend in rheumatology. So there's lots of um, uh, studies. A lot more information used to. In the bad old days, patients died. Uh, in the sort of better days, everyone got cytotoxin and lived for the most part of them. They had lots of side effects. Um, and so as time has gone, we have more and more side medications. And immune vasculitis, uh, also immune, what does that mean? So it's associated with immunofluorescence as opposed to like a We'll have like a, we'll call it a full, so all the antibodies are, uh, what are the three main, NPA, so microscopic polyangiitis, usually um, a little more benign than Wagner, Wagner tends to be more aggressive, especially in, uh, and then the, uh, in terms of, should you worry about what their NPA before you, if you treat them almost exactly the same, um, and really, you can only distinguish them histopathologically in most cases, unless you have a very strong MPO, you know, a very strong PR3. Biopsy-wise, uh, we've talked about this. Tissue is the issue. Uh, when and if the patient is clinically stable enough and you suspect ankyovascular biopsy, preferably the kidney, because um, that's higher yield. Uh, and then you can have one organ without the other. Uh, again, I'm saying there's only two organs here. There's not, obviously, it can affect the brain, it can affect other things, skin, et cetera. Um, but uh, pulmonary renal syndrome is what we're talking about here. You can have one or the other or both. Uh, we have a patient at the VA who has renal limited vasculitis and they're being treated by nephrology. Antibodies, <laughs> the uh, rheumatologist, everything. So um, the ones that are important about PR3, which is the one that goes with C-ANCA and is more associated with Wagner's, although they can flip-flop, and then MPO, which goes with P-ANCA and is more associated with MPA. Um, things get very confusing for residents is another thing I put on here because I get this question a lot. If there's discussion between the pairs, which means that, you know, it's a, that can mean a lot of things, but say that they're PR3 positive and they're... Uh, think about it. Could still certainly obviously be vasculitis, but think about malignancy, early malignancy, undiagnosed or infection in those cases, especially if all the antibodies are positive. You see patients and they positive all their positive. Think about infection or cancer. It's very helpful. Um, super helpful and help you determine. Through them, actually, so is in a this hospital. She very very good talk. Talking about how we treat right there. Um, but I think I can boil it down to you guys, which key points that you can remember, and you'll feel. Uh, Pretty empowered when it comes to treating encavasculitis. Uh, steroids should be given, and for severe disease, uh, we're often going to pulse the lung and bulk for three days and then wean from, uh, you know, typically make per kg a little more. Um, but steroids, steroids, steroids are important. Um, but rituxan, or also known as rituximab uh, CD20, is a uh, um, medicalitis now. Uh, it works for in, in treating them treatment very strongly and then it also works for maintenance and now you can just leave these people on rituxan for a while um, after you induce them and they they do very very well and like i said we used to give cytoxin all the time but there was studies after that that showed that uh, rituxan is probably equal the fact that rituxan wasn't really included in like these severe uh organ damage people are dying people who You can probably still use the same. Still getting nerve. It's okay. It's still a 
a provider choice, but most people will tell you that Dobson's uh, a good application for this. This is a study uh, called PEX. Um, for especially their uh, renal involvement was very helpful. Um, and so we've done that to many people. Uh, this study was, uh, but she's current. And so um, if that's suggested, you should always ask people uh, to talk about that first and see if that's actually going to be beneficial for your patient. And Whether we should do steroids or us steroids, steroids actually. So um, that's more for rheumatologists. So my uh, summary for what to do when you suspect vasculitis: first, already is rare. In your differential, uh, most important thing, especially if you're in primary care hospitals or whatever, you just have to know uh, uh, to look for help. Sort of don't miss these diseases. It can be not the first thing I still for myself, it can get complicated. So just don't let your mice mind. Um, collect all the information, look at radio, identify all the organs that are that means you have to ask all the reviews questions, question what else has been going on. Think about who your patient is demographically, does it fit? Uh, what vascular abilities should be included in your thought process. The chest, that you're not, and then talk to rheumatology about other appropriate uh, organ specific specialists that be, should be involved. It's pretty clear, usually, if it's the kidneys involved, nephrology should be involved, the lungs are involved. Obviously, this patient's usually going to be sick and they'll be in the ICU anyway. Uh, think about involved, it's mild, you're involved. Don't forget the curve processes. We've talked about that. Important thing I can tell you that uh, take the patient has a disease or you diagnose, read every some type of source. So read pretty good. Um, and experts often that cross sort of fields, um, which is really nice. Uh, so read all about it, and you'll become that on your team, which will questions and the rheumatologist a good um, uh, synopsis of. And then I guess three. Uh, so now's the time to ask any uh, rheumatology questions that uh, you've had when you're on rotation, when you were. Um, if you have any questions, do we see these diseases? That those things uh, within. Uh, that I can think of. The one thing we don't see very much is uh, periodic birth. More often than children. The x-rays get the labs are appropriate and ask all the right questions. Is there anything a lupus patient can't get? It's a, they can get all the things. Um, and so if the patient has known lupus, think about what are their new issues related to their, to under, you know, under, you know, whether they have lupus activity. Question. Um, how do we live with uncertainty? We do. Uh, and because the main, the reason I can say is that eventually the patient will usually reveal themselves, even if Cause give them a final one. Uh, you see an MC stuff a lot, so when you tell someone uh, diagnosis, you read about make sure it makes split around and then uh, which I will, that's a joke. You can always too. Uh, what can we do for patients that have scleroderma? It always seems like to me that was like a really sad disease to get, and that we couldn't do much for them. That's not true. Um, and then, I have is uh, are you on the right path? So I highly encourage anyone that thinks they might be interested in rheumatology to do a rotation because, in my opinion, it's the best subspecialty. It's awesome. Uh, there's so much to learn. There's so much good pathology. Your patients get better now. It used to be that we didn't have very 
medications uh, to treat people back in the bad old days. Now we have so many medications and it's ever growing that your patients really like you. My patients like me so much better in rheumatology than they did when I was a medicine resident and they liked me then too, I think so. It's mostly from Kelly and then brain. Or if anybody just wants to chime in, they can ask. See any that people have typed. Um, that was that was amazing. Um, thank you for doing this talk for us. There weren't as many people as before logged in, but I think a lot of people are going to tune into this after the fact. Um, do you guys have any yes. any questions? I guess Brandon or Kelly or whoever this uh, USR person is. So, seem like great. Idea. I'll, uh, I think you have my email too. So if anybody has specific questions or if people want to be rheumatologists, they can just like send me an email too. It's fine. I'll be around. Another month. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care.